Hi, this is Laura Wansick, and I'm so excited to be joining in with Crafty Maggie's YouTube celebration. And this is the layout of hers that I'm going to be scrap lifting in this video. So I started out with the watercolor portion, at least I'm assuming that she watercolored it on the far right of her layout. Looks like watercolor. It could be pattern paper, but I don't. I only have like three sheets of pattern paper. So I decided just to watercolor. And I'm using that photo to kind of get a sense of what colors to use. So I use a light pink, a dark pink, and then I put a little bit of yellow and teal in at the top. And I have absolutely no idea how to watercolor. I mean, other than <laughs> dipping the brush in water and then paint, I don't, I don't know anything about technique. I just literally play around and kind of get a sense for what I like. And I try to make some of the strokes darker and some of them lighter. And um, I mean, it's just been a matter of playing for me and kind of figuring it out. I noticed on the on her page, the upper right had a little bit of color blocking, and I really liked that. So I incorporated some yellow and some teal in. And sometimes it gets so wet that the paper sort of buckles. And so what I did was I used the embossing heat gun to dry it. And then I ended up adhering it to cardstock to make it more firm and to kind of stick to the paper so that it wasn't buckling in the page. And I've seen some people take when it's wet like that, kind of lift it up vertically. And sometimes the way that the water falls can create a cool texture. So, but I'm only using just the very far right of that so you don't even kind of see the way that that water fell. Using this tool helps things to dry a lot quicker, which is nice. I like the way that it turned out. I really wish that I knew more about watercoloring. I should probably watch some videos or get more of a sense about how to do that because it's kind of cool. And so then when I was picking which layout of hers to scrap lift, the one, this one jumped out at me because I love the way the sequins look behind the vellum. So I don't have any 12 by 12 vellum paper. So what I did was just use a full eight and a half by 11 sheet and then just have a little bit of a border, which worked out nicely because I had to stitch it on to adhere it over the sequins. And I wanted, I pulled the sequins out of my stash based on the photo based on the photo that I used and what sequins kind of match that photo. So I always get my color schemes pulled from the photo, from photos that I use. And so I wasn't sure how to create kind of a haphazard sequin look that also wasn't gonna, when I put the page in the album, I didn't want all the sequins to just fall to the bottom. So I took a glue stick and just sort of randomly splattered glue all over the page. My glue stick was kind of dried up though, so they didn't stick very well. So I had to end up going in with a little bit of uh, liquid glue and adhering some of them down. But I just wanted it to look really scattered and random underneath the vellum. And so sometimes making something look haphazard actually takes a lot of work, <laughs> but I don't know, it's kind of fun. So that's what I'm and doing here. And then I just here, ran just kind of the page through my strokes of sewing glue and then just hoping they catch the on vellum something. On. And the right side is where I did a lot of mess up, but that's fine because that's where the photo's going over. And then it was tricky to adhere the five down because it's also vellum. So then I had to put, I put adhesive underneath the stories chipboard and then also on the sequin that's at the top there because you can't really tell that there's adhesive because it's dark anyways. And then as I was looking at the layout, I realized that I had forgotten about the trim the pom-pom trim, so I had to move the photo over, and I had also forgotten to put a date, so I used my roller date stamp there on the bottom, and it ended up getting smudged, actually, when I was sewing the pom-pom trim on, but it's fine. I mean, stuff like that I do not get perfectionistic about at all. I thought I could just glue the pom-pom trim down, but it wasn't working, so I ran it through my machine, and I was actually surprised that it worked as well as it did. And then I think the last thing that I do here is I had a stamp from Allie Edwards in the Joy Story Kit that I wanted to put at the bottom. Oh, darn, you can't see it. Sorry. It's a full, it's a like a long sentiment there, but I only stamped part of it. And then I did like a little bit horizontal and then a little bit vertical and then took a sequin star and put it there in between those two lines. I considered doing a border of that sentiment over and over on the right side, but then I thought I've already got the pom-pom trim border, so I wanna do something a little bit different. I liked pulling a sequin over there to the right since there were so many sequins on the left. And it's, again, it's kind of a triangle of color, like the upper right watercolor block, the five, and then down to that little thing creates a, a visual triangle, which is always kind of what I'm trying to do. So this is the finished product. 
I'm, I'm really pleased with it. I like the soft colors and I always love making these little story compilations of five to 10 little stories about my daughter. So thanks for checking it out and hope you get to see everybody else's layouts too.